Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a very special interview with a leading heart valve surgeon who's using social media to help his patients before and after surgery. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Raymond Singer, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at Einstein Medical Center Montgomery Jefferson Health in East Norriton, Pennsylvania. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Singer has performed over 6,000 heart operations with more than 3,000 involving some form of valve repair or valve replacement. Dr. Singer, it is great to see you again and thanks for being with us today. Well, thanks, Adam. It's great to be with you again and, and thank you for everything you've been doing with the heartvalvesurgery.com website. Yeah, Dr. Seeger, I'm really looking forward to this conversation, but first I wanna take a moment and thank you and your team for all the support of the heartvalvesurgery.com community. And more importantly, the incredible patient care you are providing to people who have been diagnosed with these diseases like aortic stenosis and mitral regurgitation. Thanks for giving them a second chance at life. It's, it's been my honor, really, 32 years and over 6,000 of these operations, and so I'm the one who feels blessed. Yeah, so Dr. Seeger, let's get into this discussion about social media. As you know, some people love social media. Some people don't like social media. Some people are in the middle. Personally, I absolutely love what you are doing on social media. Can you share with all the great folks in, in our community, what are you doing? Well, you know, it started a long time ago in 1999. That's awfully early for websites, but I started my website, which is Heart Lung Doc. Uh, throughout most of my career, I did both heart and lung surgery. Now I do only heart surgery. When I first got into it, it was really an opportunity for educating patients. But as things evolved, it wasn't just having a website. Uh, it started to be, and my website was 1999, but you know, Facebook didn't come out till 2004. Uh, and so, uh, this evolved into Facebook and then of course, Twitter. Um, I, I, I find LinkedIn to be very good because it's mostly colleagues and other professionals. And of course now, you know, the latest thing is TikTok. I'm actually known as the TikTok doc and I've got 81,000 followers now on TikTok. Dr. Singer, I've been on your TikTok. I've seen Cheryl Worthington. I've seen David Miller talking about their experiences with you. And I love the education that you're providing patients. I'm just curious to know, are you seeing your patients get anything else out of it besides just education? I think what they're getting out of it is not having as much fear as they may have had if they were diagnosed with a heart condition, particularly heart valve surgery. It's scary. You know, they hear terms like cracking the chest or stopping the heart. And it's not in reality what it sounds like. And so they see real patients who they can relate to, who have gone through it only a couple of days earlier and are doing well, uh, not complaining of pain, you know, and, and and it's it's reassuring to them. It's not just educational, but it gives them the empowerment to go forward and to take better care of themselves. Dr. Singer, I love how your patients are feeling more empowered. And just to help people understand the reach of what you're doing on social media, places like TikTok, do you have an example you can provide the patients who are watching this? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that made TikTok uh, take off was the pandemic. Uh, because in terms of outreach, we weren't going uh, out to local places to give talks. And of course, the hot topic was COVID, and there were a lot of misleading things about it. My very first TikTok was about COVID. And within an hour, I had 800,000 responses, went on to be millions of responses. So reaching out to that many people and trying the best you can to give them a balanced approach, educational approach to what is a, a very scary topic. I'll give you one really important example. During COVID, a lot of patients were afraid to come to the hospital, even if they had chest pain. And sadly, a lot of patients had heart attacks at home because they were just scared to go to a hospital. I had one patient who delayed coming to the hospital with chest pain. He eventually came and he had a massive heart attack. He lost some heart muscle, but we were able to emergently operate on him and save him and recover some of that heart muscle. 
And so the message of that video was don't hesitate. Yes, we take precautions at the hospital when it comes to COVID. Don't you worry about that. If you're having a problem unrelated to COVID, you need to come to the hospital. You need to seek medical attention. Now, things have gotten better, obviously, but there are still people who are just now scared to death of being anywhere near a hospital. Dr. Seeger, love the patient stories, empowerment, love the current coverage of things like COVID. I un also understand that you're trying to help demystify or take some of the black box out of what happens in an operating room so patients feel even more comfortable. Can you share what you're doing there with nurses like Sheila and perfusionists like Tara? I think it's important for people to understand that it really takes a team. I've said it many times and it bears worth repeating that whatever success I may have enjoyed in my career is because of the team that's around me, but they're the quiet heroes behind the mask. The patients don't often get to know them. So I enjoy interviewing a nurse like Sheila or a nurse like Ashley or a nurse like Mary or Tara, who's a perfusionist to go over, what is this heart lung machine? What does it mean to stop your heart? Or our physician assistants and so on and so forth. These are people who will be caring for you every day. And yet many times the patients may remember just the surgeon and not realize just how critical the entire team is. Dr. Singer, you started with your website, evolved into social media, Facebook, TikTok. I'm curious, where do you see this going in the future? Well, it's interesting, Adam. Just last night, my 23-year-old daughter said, you know, why are you on TikTok? What are you doing on TikTok? You know, uh, you know, this is like a young person's thing. I tried to explain to her that this has evolved over decades in many ways. You may recall that I'm a bit of a writer. I have 65 op-ed essays. And that was the thing of the 90s. I mean, if you wrote an essay in the newspaper, people read the newspaper. That was the social media of the day. I mean, you don't think of a newspaper as social media, but it really was. Then you go into the 2000s and Facebook comes along and you start having your own Facebook page. It's a beginning of what we, we more commonly refer to as social media. And then we get into the next decade and TikTok comes along and it's videos. Um, I don't know what the future is going to be, but uh, I'm excited to remain part of it. Dr. Singer, you're in the thick of social media, just like a lot of the patients who are watching this. And they are like you, like me. We're getting bombarded by information. When it comes to thinking about one's own therapy for something like valve disease, this is a very serious conversation and research that goes on to figure out what their next step is. What's your words of advice for folks who are trying to figure out what's true or not true online? It's the single most difficult thing. Uh, they're getting bombarded at so many levels, whether it's billboards and, you know, every hospital's in the top, whatever, and this, you know, report card, um, whether or not it's ads that they see in the newspaper and on social media, there is so much content out there. What I would say to patients is, Take it with a grain of salt. It's no different than if you're watching cable news, you know, whether it's CNN, MSNBC, or Fox News, because there are obvious uh, biases. My own bias is obviously based on my 30 some years of experience. So maybe I do uh, a mitral valve repair with an approach that's slightly different than my colleague across the street. Uh, what patients need to do is listen and try to learn and then try to balance that out with what they hear from, from someone else. It's sort of like taking it as a second or third opinion, as opposed to just, you know, that this is the, the, the rule. What I find is that using social media gives me the opportunity to express myself and to explain things to patients in a very calm, um, very nice way, uh, explaining it so that they will understand it. But having this medium, of TikTok uh, or LinkedIn or any of the social media platforms, it really gives you the opportunity to connect. And patients feel that I am connecting with them just as they feel that way uh, on your website. Dr. Singer, TikTok is high velocity social media. I'm real curious to know, are people watching your videos and then actually reaching out to you for a surgical procedure like a heart valve replacement or repair? This weekend alone, I had three or four patients contact me through TikTok with questions about their care. Now, uh, in two of the 
instances, I, I, I told them that I fully agreed with their doctors and just reaching out to me, uh, which of course I, I don't charge them for, I enjoy doing this. They were so appreciative. And actually the one wrote a beautiful letter to the head of my hospital saying how grateful she was that I able to respond. Another gentleman who's coming up from Tampa, um, who has a bicuspid valve, you know a lot about that, right? And, uh, and he was scheduled to have surgery in Tampa. Uh, not that he, you know, wasn't comfortable with the hospital or the doctor, but he was that much more comfortable with me. He used to live up here in the Philadelphia area. He knew of the hospital. He had heard of me before, but now he felt this connection through TikTok because I explained about a patient recently who had a bicuspid valve. And he said, look, I just want you to take care of me. And uh, so, yes, uh, my practice has grown and has expanded well beyond the Philadelphia region. Um, not that every patient that I connect with comes flying in from Greece or something like that, but I've had patients from Virginia. I've had patients from Maryland. Now I have a patient from Florida. It's actually the second patient that's come up from Florida. So there is that, that aspect of it. Um, I never dreamed that uh, that would happen. That's not why I started this. This was all an educational thing. Dr. Singer, this has been a wonderful conversation. And I got to be honest, there are times when I have felt like I am on an island trying to educate and empower patients across social media. So to talk to a physician, in particular, a leading heart valve surgeon about what you're doing, how you're helping people with content with the reach, with the connections, and providing care has been eye-opening to say the least. And on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks so much for being with me today. Adam, thank you. I fully relate to your uh, your feelings of uh, being an island. Um, it's been a long road over some 30 years, and uh, yet it's been, it's been worth it. And I think what you're seeing now is that hospital systems understand just how important this type of outreach is. Uh, patients look for it, they enjoy it, and they make decisions about their own health based on this type of uh, social media platform. And so thank you for all you've done and thank you for your support uh, of my website, heartlungdoc.com and all the work that I've done on LinkedIn and Facebook and, and now TikTok. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.